Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Joe from Workbench. As I said last week, we're going to do some quick tips. So as Philly D says, let's just jump right into it. All right, so you've probably seen some of these in my tutorials, but I wanted to put them in another quick tips volume. So our first one is how to make a square or a circle in the quickest fashion. And that's basically to double click up here if you want a rectangle or whatever. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna twirl this down, twirl that down, hold shift and drag that all the way till it's nothing. And when you pop it back out, it's a square. Same thing works if you wanna make a circle. Let's get rid of that. Double click, scale it down all the way to nothing, and bring it back and it's a circle. I don't think you can get much faster than that, but if you can, let me know. So tip number two is how to make a ratioed rectangle. So let's say you want to do something like a piece of notebook paper or whatever. You can open this up. We're going to uncheck the constrained proportions thing here, and I'm going to put in 8.5 wide by 11 tall. That's the standard paper size, and we're going to click that to turn that back on so it keeps a proportion, and now you can just scale it up to whatever. So if you have to do any other kind of ratio, if you want like a 16 by 9 uh, TV or something, you can do the same thing, scale it up, and that's a perfect ratio of the screen. As you can see, next. This one you might have seen before, but if you do, uh, just keep quiet because nobody likes a know-it-all. As you can see, this is a parametric shape. That means there's no path. It's just all numbers that draw the square. So if you want to make it a path, you can actually right-click on here. It has to be this, not the actual containing group. And you hit Convert to Bezier Path. So you can see we now have a path. And if you open this up and keyframe this, there's something i got to warn you about. If you go to do this, if you actually play that back, it's going to do some weird shit. And to fix that, what you need to do is beforehand, select any point and then go to Layer, Mask and Shape Path, Set First Vertex. Now if I move down 10 frames, take these two, move this down here, you can see it actually does it properly. For some reason animating because it has like no vertex that it knows is the first one, it doesn't know where to put the rest of them, I guess. All right, so what if you want to start out with a path instead of a parametric object? That's actually pretty easy. Just hold Option when you draw a new shape. If you're playing fast and loose with your clicking finger, you might actually end up with parametric shape anyway, and that's because you didn't consciously hold option first. It can't be done after. All right, so next I have this illustration, and this is what it looks like. So when I converted it, I'm trying to clean it up and make these things actually transparent. So I could go through here and drill down through about a billion and a half groups, or I could do the easier thing, and that's hit G to get my Gen tool. Click on the shapes that you want to be transparent. I'm not gonna do all of them, I'm just gonna do a couple. Let's grab those three. And then you hit SS. That's why there's this typo here, because we're selecting shapes. So you can actually easily click through each one of these things, because these groups will stay up. And then I can go through, change my fills. Still not a fast way for that, unfortunately, but there you go. Often I'll use that to keyframe paths too, so uh, when you hit SS, you can just open up one of them and click the uh, stopwatch on the path, and it'll do it for all the ones you had selected. All right, so that illustration was actually part of a group, and I made those in Illustrator, and I put them on multiple artboards because After Effects hates that, and I'm a masochist. So doing it this way, I was able to keep all the colors consistent, and if I wanted to change something in one, I'd have to open up like 40 Illustrator documents. But After Effects will only see the first artboard you have. So there's a simple solution. I'm going to get rid of my backgrounds out of here because I don't need those. Then I'm just going to save this as a new file. Pick your directory, save it to a new file. And then there's a thing right here, save each artboard to a separate file. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to take a second. So what that's going to do is it's actually going to save a whole new Illustrator file, as you can see right here in my Dropbox, Icons02, and then it saves each one out as its own thing. So if we click on one of these right now, you can actually go through them all and see that they're all separated in their own files. And the extra cool part about that is that each file only contains the parts that are actually on its own artboard. So that's multiple artboards. All right, so the next thing, I discovered this by accident, and it's actually the uses of the plus minus button on the number pad. It doesn't work on the top row of numbers. If you just straight up hit plus, you can actually rotate one degree at a time. If you hold shift, it'll do 10. Can't find a way to do tenths of a degree. If you know how to do that, let me know, because that'd be even more amazing. But I started hitting modifier keys too, and I found out that if you hit option or command, you can actually zoom in and out. And I don't know why, but it's either one of them. You can hit either one. It's not, it's not like one goes in and one goes out. It's just plus goes in, minus goes out. So if you have footage like this, like a 5K time lapse, you can actually zoom out holding shift and command and minus. Get all the way out of it real quick or you can go in real fast. So it's kind of useful. And the next one, this one I'm kind of mad that I never really knew existed. I should have figured there was an effect for this, but I didn't know about it until I downloaded some video copilot file. And I figured that the other guy out there that's like me that didn't know this existed and was doing it my way will be happy. So if you want something to blink, I'll usually set some hold keyframes where it's on and off and then loop it, which is cool and all, but it's kind of stupid when you know the strobe effect exists. So I'm going to stop playing that. We're going to load up FX console, start typing in strobe, 
hit strobe light. So if we just play it, you'll see that it just changes the color and that's not what we want. At least not in this case. I do that too and I've also done that with looping keyframes. But all you have to do is under strobe, hit makes layer transparent instead of operates on color only. So that'll make it blink on and off. So if you want to match the one I have already, all you have to do is set the period equal to the whole cycle. So that's 20 frames here. And all we have to do to do that, here's another little helpful tip. I'm working in 24 frames. So I'm going to do 20 divided by the frame rate of 24. And that's going to be that duration. And the strobe duration is the time the effect is on. And that's 10 frames. So 10 divided by our frame rate of 24. And if we play that, it's going to blink. Now they're actually going to alternate because it starts in the off position. So I'm going to shift this thing 10 frames up and play that. Pretty simple. All right, next, lift and separate. So this is mostly just a reminder that you can split dimensions of things like position and scale. So that in cases such as this one, you can actually split this and keep the Y position, which is the only thing that moves, turn off the X position so that when I apply this again, I'll have the same movement, but I can now move this easily. Instead of doing the other trick, we select the keyframes and move them together. All right, so we're to our last one. And we have a whole bunch of these dots now. I was watching somebody do a tutorial and actually they went back to fix something like this. Say they wanted them to not be staggered anymore. And they went back and did like this kind of thing for every one of them, but that takes a while. So what you can do instead is select all the group of the ones that you want to move back. Go to the top, hold option and drag it. It won't go past this line. So you can do the same thing over here and there you go. Now they'll all move at the same time. So if you outpace your undo buffer or something like that, you can easily go back. All right, guys, those are 10 tips that'll hopefully help you work faster. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what I'm doing, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.